Hi there, and welcome to this Liquibase training video. This video is going to cover the other change set wizard options for SQL file change sets. So if you've been watching any of our other videos, you'll have seen us use the change set wizard to create SQL file change sets and do different things with them. And during those videos, we have sort of skipped over a lot of the other settings that are present in the change set wizard and just focused on the specific options required to perform that task. The purpose of this video is to go over the rest of those options and let you know what those are about and what's going on there. So with that in mind, we're going to cover uh, the ones that are common to all SQL file change set types, right? There are certain fields that are consistent regardless of what database engine you're using. And related to that, we'll take a look at some of the engine-specific options that are out there for Oracle, SQL Server, or Postgres. And then we'll look at the options on the finalization pane of the change set wizard. So kind of jumping right in, there are, as I said, certain options that are common to all the database types. If you're creating a SQL file change set, you'll always see these options present. The first obvious is, obviously is which SQL file to use. It's a simple file browser type field. Uh, you'll always see some for arguments, which is an ability to pass command line arguments to the uh, SQL command line tool, whatever the database engine command line tool is. And these are passed in directly as if they were on the command line and you were doing this manually. Similarly, there's, a, there's an, another one for encoding. What code page should be used? And this is an important point is that by default, Liquibase assumes that everything inbound is using the UTF-8 code page. If you need something different, certain other ones are supported and they're listed here on this slide. So those are the ones that are gonna show up regardless of, of which database that your engine you're using. We're going to take a quick dive into the ones that are specific to individual databases. So we're going to start off with Oracle and the specific changes for SQL Plus, or specific options for SQL Plus. The first is a setting for the spool command. So if you have spool commands in your SQL script, you might want to remove them if you're going to have them processed by Liquibase or at least adjust their behavior. The options here are to remove the first spool instance, all the spool instances in that script, or none of them, and that will be done as the script is processed. The other option is a checkbox for rolling the transaction back on an error. So if you imagine you have a, a large SQL script going in, and in the middle of that run, something failed, this would abort the run without committing the changes into Oracle. That would not be the default behavior of SQL Plus. The default behavior of SQL Plus would, have, would be to commit to that point. So this way you keep the half run change set from getting into the database. The example we usually use when talking about this is imagine if you were adding 100 rows to a table with a DML script. You get through 40 something rows and the next one fails for whatever reason. Normally, if that aborted, the changes would be committed. With this option checked, they would not. Jumping into Microsoft SQL Server and the SQL Command Tool, there are two added settings here. The first is a code page block. And this is to give send the instruction for which Windows code page you're using. That's the simple equivalent of the dash F with the I and O options command line flag in the SQL command command line parameters. And it just tells you what code page you expect it to use for input or output. The other option that is unique to SQL command is the management of the outs command. It lets you deal with how that gets rerouted and it will either replace the out commands in the submitted script kind of like the spool command for SQL plus. Again, the options are to 
uh, remove the first one, all of them, or none of them. Finally, getting into Postgres, the only unique field for Postgres is kind of like the commit we talked about for Oracle. If there's a failure during the run, changes up to that point are not committed by default. The half run changes would not show up in the database if you assume, if you check that box. If you do not, it will behave uh, as per the default. Okay, once you've selected your SQL files, again, if you've seen any of our videos, you know that you will eventually come through the wizard to a finalized screen. And the finalized screen allows you to populate metadata about the change set that you're creating. The only two required fields on this pane are the first two. The ideal field, which is an arbitrary string, but it must be unique within the change log. You can't have two change logs 1A. One has to be 1A, one has to be 1B, or however you're using to tag or identify your, your change sets. The second is the author field, and that's simply a text field that you populate to note who the author of this change set actually is. Again, both of those fields are mandatory and the change actually will not process until you fill them out. The second set of settings that we're dealing with on the finalized screen are the optional settings. Now, this first block are for context. And if you've seen any of our other videos, we've talked about labels and contexts. A context value here specifies a specific DVF where this change set should appear. The labels tag for the change set and track is for tracking and grouping the change sets. And the comment field is literally just a comment or notes field. The next block down is change set execution settings. Now there are two settings here and they're each kind of related to each other, but they both have kind of a separate role. So the first one is called is titled redeploy this change set every time the contents are modified. And so this is the idea that this is a rerunnable script. If that if and if that script changes in any way, the tool will identify that there's been a change and rerun the script. Otherwise, it's going to assume it is not rerunnable. The second checkbox says always run this change set. So this is a situation where you always want to run this particular change set no matter what. Every time you run a deployment, this is going to run. And there's a note here that if you, if you do check this, you do have to check the first one to redeploy the change set every time the contents are modified. And so those are just really there for dealing with rerunnable scripts or for forcing environment parameters in, in a deployment situation. Related to those two is the sequencing setting. This deployment order box defines whether the change set should be run when it is run, either in its natural order, just when it was added to the change log, it will run in the normal sequence, or if you want it to run before any new change sets are applied or after any new change sets are applied. So if you create three or four change sets and you want this particular one to run first, no matter what, you would change this value here. It's also related to the uh, two checkboxes above. If you have something you want to run before any new changes are added to an environment, that's where you would, uh, you would check the appropriate box or boxes above and set this to before as an example. Next set down is the rollback settings. And if you, again, if you've seen our other videos, we go into some depth here. These just allow you to specify a specific set, SQL script to use to roll back this change set. The last set of, of values here are for modeled change set types only. So if you're creating a model change set type, which is outside the scope of this video, but if you're creating one of those type change sets, you can affect the contents that are modeled and enforce behaviors and casing through the use of quotation marks in that change set. That really only comes up if you're using Liquibase Enterprise. If you're using Liquibase Business or Below, the uh, wizard here 
is only going to be applicable for SQL file change sets or SQL script change sets. And this particular setting is not applicable in that situation. With that kind of overview, we're going to go ahead and dive into a quick look at where all this stuff actually is to reorient you. If you haven't seen the other videos where we've used the change set video, I would encourage you to do so and investigate those. This video is not a substitute for the change set workflow instructional videos that exist elsewhere in the repository. So we're going to go ahead and jump over into the demonstration environment now. So jumping into the demo environment, the change set wizard is here in the edit, under the Add a Change Set button, just to the left of the status display. We click Add a Change Set. We will shortcut to the SQL-related ones. We'll pick SQL Command for Microsoft. Here's that first set of settings, that first set of options. We're going to assign a SQL file to it. We won't bother adding any of these other ones here. We've just discussed what they're for. And this is the finalized screen that we showed you again. The only ones that are really mandatory here are the uh, top two, ID and author. And here are the rest for the context, labels, comments, execution settings, deployment order, rollback settings. And again, if this was a model change set, the object name quoting strategy would be relevant since it's a file-based one, this setting does nothing. And then you click Finish. That's kind of the core idea. This is where you find all of these settings. I'd encourage you to watch the uh, workflow videos if you have not. But now you know a little bit more about what these other settings are that you may have seen in those videos uh, or will see in those videos. Hope this helps you progress on your liquid-based journey. Thank you for watching this liquid base educational video. We certainly hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions or need any more information, please feel free to reach out to us through our website or various social media outlets. Thanks again. Have a good day.